Uh, I want to get to earnings specifically in a moment, but I can't help but think you became CEO years ago just in time to face the financial crisis. Uh, as we're getting into this period, dealing with this novel coronavirus, how is this similar? How is it different for you from the CEO seat? Well, John, having been here 20 years, uh, I used to think that I had seen it all, but this is clearly unprecedented times. And I think like all responsible business corporations, what's front and center for all of us right now is uh, foremost the well-being of our employees and our customers. And so uh, focusing on what we are doing as it relates to working from home, uh, ensuring that we have the travel restrictions that are appropriate at this time uh, moving forward, and ensuring business continuity uh, as it relates to making sure that our customers who want to engage with digital, uh, that has really been all consuming, which is different from anything uh, that we've experienced before. Now, on the call last night, you said that among the impacts that you expect to see, uh, they are enterprises deferring booking decisions, delaying consulting services implementations, reducing marketing spend, uh, consumers reducing spending in countries more adversely impacted by this COVID-19 situation. How well do you think you're able to, to gauge, to estimate the impacts of those things Given the lack of tests here in the U.S. and, and some of the, the spotty data we're getting, is it still kind of day by day, week by week evaluation? Big picture, though, John, I mean, we had an outstanding quarter and uh, we had our first three billion dollar quarter. What we said on the call, if you uh, take uh, both our businesses on the digital media side, uh, we had record new uh, ARR for what is a Q1 in 400 million. And I think uh, we saw little to no impact as it related to, to how people were transacting uh, with us on Adobe.com. On the digital experience side, which is the enterprise business that you're alluding to again, um, you know, greater than 20% bookings growth, uh, revenue, subscription revenue grew north of that. But with the travel restrictions, uh, what we are seeing, and in all my conversations with CEOs around the world, what they're focusing on is first employees and making sure that their employees are safe. Uh, but all of them are also uh, asking us as Adobe how we can help them once they focus on the employees, how do they engage with their customers digitally. But yet we said that as it uh, related to our Q2 numbers, we would expect that with the travel restrictions, uh, with some of the high touch requirements that happen in enterprise, we would expect to see uh, some weakness as it related to people delaying uh, maybe their digital purchases and the services implementation. And so on that side, uh, you know, we factored all that into, into our targets. But overall, I would say that you know, Adobe had an outstanding quarter as it related to Q1. And long term, nothing changes. The imperative to engage digitally is only going to get more important. But I think all corporations are first trying to figure out how they operate digitally and then focus on their customers. And I, I do want to uh, give some time to emphasize that as well. Your stock is up 9%, uh, and, and that is for a reason. And I want to ask your cloud positioning, does that uh, help ameliorate the, the potential downside in a situation like this? Meaning, when people do have to work from home, if they're using Adobe software, how easy is it for them to, to be productive on that software from home? I know a lot of your customers have set up limits on exactly which machines people can use the software on. Are you able to make adjustments to that in a secure way uh, so that some of those employees perhaps can, can use the software on, on different machines as appropriate and are those conversations taking place? Uh, that's a great question, uh, John. And uh, for somebody who's followed us, as you know, uh, our business is relatively predictable. The move to the cloud enables us with 90% recurring revenue. And I think you saw that both in Q1 uh, and you're going to see that in Q2 as it relates to the core profitability of the company. But we have leaned forward uh, with education specifically uh, to answer your question on how we're engaging with customers. Given every single institution around the globe is moving to online, what we've already decided to do is to allow people who had access to Creative Cloud or Document Cloud in the lab 
uh, to have access to it at home. So, you know, we're going to be lean forward. We're engaging with every one of our enterprise customers also in terms of an outreach and asking them how we can help them during this time. But I think all responsible corporations like Adobe are going to look at it and say, let's take the long run, but let's make sure that our customers are not impacted during this trying time. Shantanu, tell us about productivity during th this work at home period. I mean, I know many people know that you have been building out headquarters in San Jose, several towers you've got downtown there, partly for the purpose of productivity, getting workers uh, together to, to build and, and troubleshoot this software. When people have to work remotely, how much do you have to slow down your timelines on how you roll out uh, improvements, new features uh, in, in your cloud software, and um, how much does that potential slowdown or hit uh, impact you if this goes on for several months? Well, John, we've had this debate incessantly in terms of, you know, is it more productive to be in a closed office, an open office, whether it's more productive to be at work or to, you know, work from home. And I think we're going to all, as a, a globe, understand and get more data associated with it. You know, my sense is that on the engineering side and the product side, uh, more of the product people, especially the engineers, are accustomed to working from home. Uh, and so I think that will continue unabated. But there is some element of when you're walking down the hallway and having a, a really interesting debate and that causes uh, new innovation, I think we're all going to try and find out how to keep that productivity and creativity alive uh, as we transition to a completely digital environment. And I think most companies are going to see a little bit of a hiccup, but uh, it's going to be nice the next time I meet with my engineers and I can actually give them some real data <laughs> on what we are seeing in this situation. But Sean Tanu, that raises a great point, and you're so good at seeing around large corners. Um, to the degree that uh, we do come back to work uh, and congregate again as Americans, as Europeans, as Asians, you name it, uh, in a year or whenever it is, um, do you see that coming back fully? Or will there, has, it, has there been a structural change in the way we are going to relate to each other as coworkers? I, I think there will be some fundamental structural changes that are going to be long-reaching, I think, as it relates to business continuity planning and making sure that people can w work remote. I, I think you are going to see some fundamental structural changes, but I think most companies are going to look at this and say, uh, what, what, what did we learn as we had everybody work at home, and how do you make that a part of the normal workforce? And how do you balance uh, you know, the beauty of having everybody in a room uh, when you can be creative and you can really brainstorm uh, with how you can use more technology? I mean, at Adobe, we've doubled down on making sure people have access to this technology wherever they are. Uh, we are going to be, as soon as I finish this, do my first all-employee meeting, as well as my first uh, all-VP uh, uh, leader meeting, completely virtually and completely electronically. And as you know, we're doing our digital summit that we normally have in Vegas, also electronically. So we're all going to learn from this process, which I think is a good thing. I mean, we all know that technology has significant benefits, and as long as we can use this effectively. But I think there will be long-term structural changes in how we work. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how all of that plays out, Shantanu. Um, you, you touched on this a little bit, but I just want to dig into it uh, further here, and that's um, the fact your CFO said our recurring revenue model and real-time visibility we have into our business uniquely positions Adobe to manage through an uncertain environment. That real-time visibility right now uh, is so important, especially given the fact that, at least from a macro perspective, so much of the data now seems kind of old. The fact that there's so much uncertainty around, say, the earnings picture from a market standpoint. If you had to break it down across the different sizes of customers, of businesses that are using your products and services, different regions around the world, what are you seeing in terms of that real-time visibility right now? Morgan, that's a great question, and we have this thing that we call the data-driven operating model that enables us to understand every single day what the customer funnel is. And what we said was that on Adobe.com, uh, both in the entire Q1 as well as uh, the first few days of March, we've actually seen little to no impact. Uh, in China, where we have a smallish business as it relates to our creative cloud, and we sell through resellers, that saw a little bit of impact. But on the other hand, in Italy, uh, where we have a relatively healthy business, 
while the reseller, in other words, people engaging directly in physical locations, was impacted a little bit, we saw additional strength on Adobe.com. And so I, I just continue to think, as long as consumer sentiment is positive, that people will engage more digitally because people are at home, they're going to be creative, they'll want to be entertained. Uh, but it's changing, and we get visibility country by country uh, in terms of what's happening because we not only process trillions of transactions on behalf of our on behalf of our enterprise customers, but we see that directly. And it's it's fascinating uh, to see how this has actually uh, moved in conjunction with uh, the outbreak. And Shantanu, uh, you and, and Adobe are uh, in the top tier of fast growing. Uh, large technology companies. So I wonder from your perspective also as CEO, what are you still spending on in this environment? Well, we just, you know, we've always uh, focused on how do we continue to build the company for the long run while navigating the current environment. And so I think, as I think about that, fundamental innovations in product, uh, we will continue to invest in that. Uh, we will certainly look at geographies and say, do we disproportionately uh, double down on some of these places? And I think the other thing that's top of mind for us right now is when we have these solutions like electronic signatures uh, or what we are doing to enable productivity when people aren't in a physical location, how do we get the awareness out? So uh, I think much like a, a number of our customers are asking us, we're probably going to spend a little bit more on awareness uh, because we feel like stronger companies can actually grow stronger uh, during this period. Okay, and finally, to be clear, you're, you're still hiring uh, and, and across the board or in specific areas? You know, we're still hiring across the board, but all of these interviews are virtual, and so part of the challenge that we have is how do we know whether it's a robot on the other side or, or an AI or an actual individual? So it'll probably get delayed a little bit, uh, but big picture, I think we're just going to continue to focus on it. But we'll monitor the situation uh, in real time.